Well, hello there. Thanks so much for joining us. This is the first time I'm going live both to YouTube and Facebook. And by all accounts, it's working. My friend Brian sent me a little uh, screen grab to show two screens, YouTube on one side, Facebook on the other. So uh, I'm guessing that you can see me and you hear me. So I'm just going to carry on. But folks, thanks so much for joining me. I can see from the chat, people are all over the place. Even my mate Craig Sperrin has made an appearance, which is amazing. But I've got three things that I want to go through with you tonight. Three things that I only recently discovered. Um, just over a week ago now, we had the Photoshop World Conference. It was an online conference over three or four days. I forget now. It's been a heck of a week. Um, and I did two classes. And in between the classes, I'm kind of always playing around. Those who know me always know that I'm tinkering, trying to find out new ways of doing things. And I found three things which I want to share with you. I'll go through those in a moment. Before we do that, just a little bit of admin, just to let you know, as a reminder, that uh, obviously it's not long. It's uh, not long until this one, really. The Photoshop Virtual Summit 5. I can't believe we're on number five. That's coming up very soon. You can get a free ticket for this, a free pass to watch all the classes but I don't know when those tickets are kind of stopped and then it becomes a paid version. So if you haven't got one, just go and register for it. Use this link, uh, go through to it, register for a free pass. If you use it, great. If you don't, you've lost nothing, but at least you've got it. The classes get released over, it's a five-day event. There's something like, is it 20 instructors, something like that, 30 hours worth of content, Tons of stuff. Just get your pass. The other thing is just to say, I always say this because it's confusing. If you haven't already, click on the subscribe button. It should say follow. All right. That's all it is. There's no monetary kind of exchange, anything like that at all. It just means that you get notified when new videos go up. That's all there is to it. All right. But let's get into it. There's these three things I want to show you. I'll dive over into my, um, into my Photoshop so you can see it first of all. Right. Here we go. Let's dive into my uh, desktop. Oh, I can't get my desktop to come up. Bear with me a second. Let's just see if I can get my desktop to come up. Let's just create a new scene there. And we'll go to source. And we'll go screen share. There we go. Right, let's get rid of me. Cool. All right, so here we've got uh, a picture that I did a while ago now. This is a friend of mine called, well, I know him. I'm going to call him a friend because I definitely wouldn't want him not to be a friend. A guy called Steve Gomer that we did this picture of, of my friend Ian Monroe's studio, Skint Creative. Uh, and what I want to do is show you how we can create, how we can do a face swap. All right. Now, the face swap, I've always been a big believer in the way that the best way to learn things in Photoshop is to make fun, is have a bit of fun with it because what you learn that's fun to do can also have a serious side to it. And I'll explain what I mean by that in a moment. But I want to show you now this quickly, a technique that you can use for doing face swapping. And it's not involving masking, okay? You can get Photoshop to do it automatically. There's no generative fill AI involved at all. So let me just uh, go back to my desktop. Now, what I'm going to do is I've got this picture of Steve and I've got here this picture of my friend Anthony. Now, Anthony, I know at the moment, is driving to Bristol to pick his wife up so we can get away with doing this because he doesn't know he's being used. I don't think he does anyway. So what I want to do is I want to put Anthony's face onto this picture here of Steve and trying to blend it in. And you can see when I jump between each picture, they're both very, very different. Very different lighting, very different coloring as well. But check this out. This is just incredible. All I'm going to do is get my lasso tool. Let's just zoom in a little bit. I'll get my lasso tool and I'm going to make a very loose selection around the inner part of Anthony's face. So I'm coming down to his chin, either side of his mouth, up around the outside of his eyes and include a little bit of his forehead just there like that. Once I've got that selection, I'm then going to put that up onto its own layer. So if I'm on a Mac, I hold down the Command key, Windows, I hold Control key, and I press J. And you can now see in the Layers panel, I've cut that selected area out, and that's this little bit area just here. Then I'll get the Move tool, and I can click and drag this here over on top of the picture of Steve. This is where I want it to kind of be blended in. So let's just zoom in. I'm now going to kind of line it up so that everything kind of fits pretty well the same as Anthony's face fitting on to Steve's. So let's just go to a free transform and I'll bring up the bottom so the mouths kind of line up. Something like that with the eyes. That's probably around there would be good. Let's just put this here now. Look at the width. I might just make it slightly wider like so. Okay, that's looking all right. Get the move tool and I'll put it over there. I'll lower the opacity and I'll just bring it into something like that. 
Okay, so now it's all lining up pretty good. Now the next step, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold down the command or control key and come to the layers panel and click directly on the thumbnail of Anthony. And when I do that, you can see here, we get the marching ant selection, okay? The active selection. I could also just right click and choose select pixels. So once we've got that, the next part is really, really important. I'm then gonna go to select, modify, contract, all right? And when we do that, we get this little dialog box comes up here and it says, how many pixels do you want to contract or make smaller this selection? Generally, you find around about five pixels will work perfectly well for this one. So I'll just click OK. Now, if I zoom in on this selection, you can see now, look, there's the original outline of the actual selection cutout I did of Anthony's face. But now the marching ant selection is slightly within it, five pixels within it. That's really important because now what I'm going to do is go to the layer below. I'll unlock it. And all I'm going to do is simply press delete. I don't know if you can notice that there in the actual thumbnail on the layers panel, but if I just get rid of that selection and turn Anthony's face off just there, this is now what we've got, all right? So we've cut out the area of Steve and we've got Anthony on top. But if I lower the opacity of Anthony just a little bit and zoom in, you can see here's the lower opacity area, but this is the bit that overlaps just there. That's the overlapping bit. Now that overlap is really important because what is kind of like when you use generative fill AI, you never just kind of make a selection of an empty area and say, fill that. You always overlap part of the picture so that the AI can go, right, I know now what you want me to blend into, all these bits that I'm kind of overlapping. Pretty much the same works with this here. So we want to do that. All right, so now that we've got that, let's take the opacity all the way back up to 100%. Now though, watch this. Now there'll be a little bit of tweaking I need to do afterwards, but check this out. I'm gonna make both layers active in the layers panel. So they're both highlighted by just shift clicking on one and then both on the other one there. So they've both got this blue highlight. Then I go to edit, auto blend layers. And this has been in Photoshop for a really long time. We'll click on auto blend layers. Here we've got the auto blend layers properties. By default, the blend method is set to panorama. We'll leave that. The most important part is at the bottom where it says seamless tones and colors definitely have a tick in that checkbox. And there's also one underneath, content aware fill transparent areas. There shouldn't be anywhere here that needs to be filled in, but I'll just leave it ticked anyway. Then we'll click OK and watch this. Give it a few seconds and bam. Look at that, <laughs> check it out. I mean, I know there's gotta be some stuff done to it, just a little bit of blending in. I mean, that there, I mean, look at it. It is it is pretty seamless. It's still got the nice lighting on him, but it's the, everything's just changed. It's blended in so well. The bits at the top here, maybe where the skin tone don't match. If you watched one of the uh, YouTube lives I did maybe a couple of weeks ago, when we used that skin fixing technique, that one there would work exactly the same on this one here. It would blend it in perfectly. But how cool is that to be able to blend in? Anthony Crothers is barbarian. <laughs> really cool. I just love that. I just think that is such a cool technique. Really, really, let's get rid of me just there. Really cool way of kind of blending in uh, faces. But the serious side of that is, uh, I won't show it on the YouTube Live or Facebook Live, is, but with, when I did this... Uh, I used to do a veteran's portraits project and there was a particular veteran that just before I went to photograph them, I got a call from his daughter to say that just all of a sudden he developed a cancerous growth on his face and it was right on his cheek here. And I was thinking before and not a problem. We'll be able to just, you know, copy some skin over and it'd be no problem. But when I turn up, it is quite significant. So all I did was I took a photograph of him positioned in such a way that the light hit one side of his face and shadow on the other. And then I moved the light to the other side. So the light then hit this side of the face and shadow on the other side. So I had both sides of his face lit and both sides in shadow. I then just took a nice clean bit of skin and did exactly this technique to blend it in, to get rid of that horrible growth that was just so upsetting for him. Do you know what I mean? So we got rid of it. This technique, a bit of fun, shows how a, that a bit of fun technique there can be used in a very serious and very kind of... Um, very, just a very good way, I think, a very good way. So that's that one there. Let me just show another one now. So let me just dive over back to my desktop. And what I'll do is I'm going to show you now uh, this. Let's just get rid of this. 
and get rid of Anthony just there. And I'm going to go to this. Uh, let's go to Scott. Now, you would have seen, I'm sure, if you've followed me for a while, you would have seen this picture. This is a guy called Scott Kelly, who is a um, a yeoman warder, a beef eater at the Tower of London. Top, top fella. Really good guy. And I went to photograph him. Now, what I want to do is I want to show you how I photographed him in two stages. But there's something else that I want to show you. Something that I never showed when I showed the retouch on this picture before. And it is just, I love it. I absolutely love it. And I'm really hoping that you like this. So what I'll do is, let's have a look. I'm going to go, to, first of all, let's close that one down. And I'm going to open up these two images here. Because when I first photographed Scott, you can see the background here, this Westcott background that I used behind him wasn't tall enough to include Scott and this, uh, this thing here that he's also holding. Somebody in the comments, if you know what that's called, please remind me. I'm always forgetting. But it wasn't tall enough to cover it. So I ended up taking two photographs. The light was in, in one fixed position. I had somebody behind the background, so I took one photo. Scott stood perfectly still. I then took another photo as the background was lifted up. So then I've got photos with the background covering all the areas, albeit in two separate pictures. So let me show you, first of all, how I blended this together. Dominic, I think it's something more intricate than a spear. I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's called something else, but I'll, I'll go with that just for now. All right, let's go have a go. So I'll go the crop tool. Make sure that the, now that we've got this new beta, uh, the generative fill is out of beta. Let's make sure on the top here it just says background default. And I'll just drag in the sides. So if we don't need these areas on the sides. Let's go to there on that one. And I'll go to the other one. And we'll crop in again because we don't need those bits on the sides just there. And we'll go to there as well. So then what I will do is I'll get this image. I'll get my move tool, click and drag onto the tab of the other image, let, wait, wait for it to open up, bring the cursor in, hold the shift key down, and then let go. So now they're going to line up, but you can see there's an obvious problem. They don't exactly line up. So what I'll do now, make sure both layers are highlighted in the layer stack, and then go to edit. And where we had that auto blend layers, just above it is auto align layers. So we'll click on that, use the default settings and just click OK. And very quickly, it lines it up. I mean, you can see there, Scott did a very good job of standing still in between both of those shots. The next thing I do is get rid of the bits in both pictures where there is no background. So obviously this one here at the top. So what I'll do is I'll turn off the bottom one. We'll get the marquee tool, rectangular marquee tool, drag out a selection, and I'll just press delete. Oops, let's go to the top one just there and press delete on that one. Then we'll go to the bottom layer and I'll do the same with this bottom area. So don't need that, and press delete. Now, if I turn both layers on, this is now what we're left with. And you can imagine if you had to manually blend this together, that would be quite a challenge because you can see how that gray background, even though you know it was the same lighting, because it's been moved up, it's slightly different on it. This is where that auto blend layers comes into its own. So just like before, we will make sure that both of the layers there are highlighted in the layer stack. We go to Edit and Auto Blend Layers. Again, just use the default settings, Blend Method, Panorama, Seamless Tones and Colors, Content Aware, Fill Transparent Areas. That's going to be good because there are some blank areas, top left, uh, sorry, top right and bottom left. Let's just click OK, keep our fingers crossed, give it a few seconds, let Photoshop do some hocus pocus, and, and there you go. That was actually really quick. So you can see it's done a really good job. Now, obviously, what we could do at this stage is we could use generative fill, whatever, to make the picture wider, excuse me, make it a bit wider. But the bit I was always asked about was this bit here. The bit at the bottom, how did I sort that out? How did I fix it and make it look as if there was some skirting board going across the bottom? Well, let me show you. This, I, I love this. It's, this, this is fun. First of all, let's have a look. What's the width of this particular image? Let's go to image size. And the width is 1,984 pixels, so roughly 2,000 pixels. Okay, so what I'll do then, I'll create a new document. And the width will go for 2,000 pixels. The height, I'm going to go for 250, all right? Um, doesn't matter what background color is, not at all. I'll just click OK. So that's what we've got here. Then what I'm going to do is go to Select and All. 
So you can see now this entire area here has now got a active selection going around it. Because now what I'm going to do is use Generative Fill AI. And I'm going to type in Pine Wood. Okay, Pine Wood and click on Generate. Let's just see what this now does for us. I'm hoping it will give me some good ones that would look good for use as skirting board. So let's have a look. Give it a few seconds. Roughly 10 to 12 seconds for this to come up. Oh, actually, that's not bad at all. So we've got that one, we've got that one, or we've got that one. I might go for, let's just go with this one here. I don't know what that little funky bit is there on the side, but we'll leave it anyway. In fact, tell you what, let's just get, yeah, we'll leave it. That's fine. Uh, okay, next thing to do then. Now that I've got my skirting board, I want to make it look as if, I want to make it look as, I don't know if the, I'm not somebody who does woodwork. It's a shame Anthony isn't here because he does, but I think it's called routing where you give wood a little bit of a shape. Because what I don't want to do is a skirting board to just look like a plank of wood. I want it to have look quite ornate with it kind of shaped as it's against the wall there. I think it's called routing. I might be wrong. But let's have a, let's have a quick look what we can do here. So now that we've got that, I'm going to go File, New, and I'm going to go a new document size. I'm going to go for the height of 250, and I'm going to go for the width of 250. I only need it to be a simple square like that just there. And I'm going to fill that with gray because I'm going to do some dodging and burning. Watch this. So this is my this is the bit where I feel a little bit Bob Ross, okay, he's painting. Because my wife watches Bob Ross and it's really quite relaxing. You see him doing his painting and it's like, what on earth is he doing there? And all of a sudden, what he was doing is revealed. I'm hoping that's what you're going to see with this here. But this bit now, this is dodging and burning, and this really does work well. I'm going to go to my dodge tool over on the toolbar, and in the options bar at the top of the screen, leave it on mid-tones. The exposure, I'm going to leave at 20%, okay? And I'm just going to do some dodging and burning on this, uh, this gray square. And I think, first of all, in fact, I'll tell you what, I'll get my burn tool, first of all. Again, 20%, and I'll just do a little bit of dodging and burning on this. Let's do a little bit at the top. So I'll go over to the left-hand side, and I'm just going to darken down across the top. All right, I'm just doing some brush strokes to darken it down across the top like that. And then I'm going to do a slightly bigger one. Like so. And then I'm going to do a smaller one down the bottom. And you're probably looking at this thinking, what on earth is he doing? Something like that. All right. So now that we've got that there, uh, wherever we have um, burning, we're going to have dodging next to it. So I'll change over to the dodge tool. Again, using the same settings, 20% exposure, and I'm going to fill these gray areas in with some dodging in between where these burning areas are. So again, we're going to here, and I'll just brighten this up. So you can see now, look, we've got dodging and burning going on, like so. I need to do a bigger one right in this part here. Something like that. And then let's have a look at the bottom. So the great thing about this is, I think I've noticed somebody's coming saying, could you have not just searched for pine skirting on generative fill? Possibly. I've never tried it. But with this way here, I can get it to look exactly how I want it to look. Whatever shape I want this routing, I'm sure that's the right word, uh, to look. All right. So let's have a look. That's what we've got there. Actually, just make it a bit brighter in that top part. So now that we've got that, what I'm going to do is go back to my skirting board here. Let's just lower the actual saturation in that. Let's get some hue and saturation, and I'm just going to lower the saturation of that. Just don't want it to be too strong. Something like that would look good. All right. Now that we've got that, let's get this dodging here and dodging and burning. Drag that now onto this layer. Hold the Shift key down, and it'll plonk it right in the middle. Go to Free Transform. I'll hold down the Option key on Mac or Alt on Windows, drag out one of the side handles, and that means the other side will also grow at the same corresponding size. So we've got that. Now look, if I zoom out, is that starting to look like there's a little bit of shape in it? Something like that. But now look, if I've got that, I can then go to my blend modes. So let's just go over them. And what I love about the blend modes now is that as we go over them in real time, we see an example of what they do. Look at that. Oh, come on. Look at that. That's looking good. I like it. That's looking pretty good, actually. I like that one. That one there. Now, look, can you see how that looks a little bit like it's got a bit of a shape to it now, like skirting board? How cool. Right, okay. Let's now create 
a merged layer at the top of the layer stack. I'll drag this now over into my picture of Scott, which is this one. And I'll drag it down and put it into position just there. Let's get rid of that horrible bit on the side. I'll just stretch it out a little bit. It doesn't really matter. We'll go for that and then zoom in. All right, so obviously I'm just doing this quick. This is just to show you. We want to cover that little bit there. I might just resize it. Let's squash it down a touch like so. And there we go. So now obviously it needs to go behind Scott. So I'll click on the layer directly underneath this one, which is the one that contains the merged layers of Scott. And I'll go to Select and Subject. And we can see now here we've got the selection. And then I'll add a layer mask, but I'm going to fill the areas that are selected in black. And those areas will then hide what you can see here of the skirting board. So I hold down the Option key on Mac, Alt key on Windows, come to the layer mask icon at the bottom of the layers panel and just click. Oops, so what's happened here? Hold on. <laughs> so we go, oh, I need to go up to here, add the layer mask and bosh. There you go. That's behind him. It's missed just a little bit on there. So let's just get a brush and make sure it's a little bit harder. And I'll just brush that in just there, just to get bring some of that. Um, I've noticed some people have said what it is, but I can't see. So I'm going to say spear. We'll get the rest of the spear just in there, like so. So something like that. We might want to put a little bit of a shadow underneath it, maybe where the skirting board touches the floor. So I'll add a blank layer above the emerge layer of Scott. I'll get a brush, make sure it's quite hard again, like so. And I want to put one dab on the left hand side, hold down my shift key and then click on the right hand side. And I'll use the arrow keys on my keyboard just to bring that up a little bit. So it's just underneath it like so. So it's just a little bit of a shadow where that wood's touching there. It's obviously going across Scott's feet. So we need to have another layer mask. I don't need to make one. I can copy this one just here at the top of the layers panel, hold down the option key, click and drag and it'll put it there as well for me. So you've got something like that. And again, there's so much more you could do. You could you could maybe look at have, having a bit of lighting because you can see here this right-hand side of the image is where the light source was. So this side, side is brighter. This slide, side is in slightly a bit in shadow. So I guess we could kind of maybe add a layer mask. So I add, add a new layer. We'll add a clipping mask. And we could just get a gradient. Let's have a look. Let's get G. Go for the gradient. Make sure it's a radial gradient. And we'll just do, let's have a look, will that work there? There we go, oh, it's a bit more on that. Drag it across, and we could just lower the opacity, I don't know, something like that, maybe, just to kind of bring down the exposure on it. But how cool is that, to be able to blend those images together, which I find is incredible, because there's all this talk about generative fill AI and artificial intelligence in Photoshop being the answer to everything, when really it's, it's not, it's just a tool. There are still some fantastic techniques in Photoshop and tools that we can kind of turn to to create this kind of stuff. Um, I forget who it was. I think uh, let's have a look on the comments just here for a second. Um, Tim said, "Could you have searched for pine skirting?" Tim, I don't know. I, I guess you. I guess you could have done, but I'm going to have to try that out. I'm going to have to have a look to see if that's possible to see if you can get it. But like I said, by me doing the dodging and burning, I can get it to look exactly how I want to. And it's amazing, isn't it? Just that light and shadow how it can make that impression of something kind of having a bit of shape because the shadow parts appear further back, the light parts appear closer. And that's what creates that illusion of that shape. So kind of cool with that one. Right, let's have a look at one last thing I want to show you. Let's just dive over into here and then I'll have a look at some of the questions. Uh, let's just close that down, close that down and close that. I love that. Dodging and burning, so cool. Right, let's just open up this last one here. Uh, and this goes back to the picture you may remember a couple of weeks back on a YouTube live, two or three weeks ago anyway. I showed this picture here of the wonderful Di Edwards, absolutely wonderful woman. And I showed how to use that skin fix. It's kind of like a dumbed down version of frequency separation, of how you can blend the skin tones very, very easily together. I want to just show you something else that I've discovered that you can actually use the remove tool when you're using that particular technique, but you've got to use it in a certain way because if you don't, it kind of goes a bit weird. Let me show you what I mean. Right, so here is the original picture, out of camera picture, and this is what I originally showed in that video of how you can fix where the skin tone on Di's forehead here didn't match the skin tone of where her hairline is. And 
the action. If you're part of my email group, you'll know that you can actually get hold of this action so that you can uh, you can do this technique. So let's have a quick look at that. I'll play the action just here, uh, skin fix. It asked me to blur it just a little bit. So I think we'll blur, I think this one here is around about six or seven, something like that. Click OK. And then there we go. So now when we play that action, it creates these three layers. The layer that's got the color on it at the bottom, the layer with all the detail on it at the top, which is this one just here. And then we've got this one in the middle, and that's the one where you do all the fixing of all the color issues, like blending in the skin tone. So originally what I showed was how you could um, get a gradient. You'd get a radial gradient, making sure you use the classic gradient option in the, tool, in the options bar just there. And you've got to make sure as well that you use in the basic section the middle one here, which is foreground to transparent. You definitely need to make sure you got that one. And also at the top where it says dither, get your money's worth. Put a tick in the dither checkbox. And we just kind of sample some of the skin color. Let's just zoom in a touch. And then we can kind of help it to kind of blend in. But you can also, like I said, you can use the remove tool. So come over to the toolbar. Here's the remove tool. And let's just say, for argument's sake, I don't really want to do this, but let, this is just purely for demonstration. Let's just say that we want to remove this kind of mark here on Dye's forehead and maybe these bits over here, all right? What I'll do is I'll get the Remove tool and you can see we get this kind of pinkish overlay. Then I'll let go and give it a, a second or two and it'll go to fix it. Now it might look on your screen, I can't really tell what the resolution's gonna be like for you, but it might look like it's fixed it, but it hasn't. Because if I zoom in, I really don't know if you can see this, but what you've got now is repeated de detail. If I turn every layer off apart from this one, that there, can you see? Oh, you should only see color on this layer, but you can see texture. You can see color on, you can see texture and color. Here is where I use the gradient on her forehead and hairline. You can see that's just a gradient there of color, but here it's actually copied also the detail. And that's because when we use the remove tool, it kind of looks across the whole image and gathers information from everything. And obviously in this here, we've got the detail layer active, which means it's gonna double up. It's gonna grab some detail off there to fix what it thinks I need fixing. But on top of that, we've got even more detail. So we've got twice the sharpening, twice the detail in that one particular area. So that's not how to use it. So let me just show you how we're gonna do it. Let's just make sure that we haven't got that just there at the moment. Right, all you need to do, very, very simple, and it works so well, is just turn off the detail layer. So now we are left with a blurry image, which is really just a collection of color. We'll get the remove tool. We'll go to that blank layer there, which is where we do all the fixing on, and I'll brush over that. Let go, and there you go, it's fixed it. If I turn the detail on, again, I don't know what your resolution is like, but that there, all the detail is exactly as it should be, but the color of that mark has gone as well. Let's just turn that one off and we'll go to this part up here. Let's just brush over that. The remove tool is just incredible. So we'll go to there, give it a second or two to fix it. You can see now that's been removed. Turn the detail on and look at that, seamless, the way that's fixed it. So that was just a quick one there, just to kind of let you know that if you are gonna use that technique, that dumbed down, uh, dumbed down frequency separation technique, you can use the remove tool, but just make sure that you turn off the detail because it will look at everything and it will kind of double up and then you'll have areas on your picture where there's more sharpening, more detail than others and it just won't work. Right, let's have a quick look to see if there are any questions. Now, there probably are. Let's have a quick look, scout through. So just bear with me while we uh, have a quick look through the comments section. I guess it's, what's really good about this is I can see that I can see where you're watching. It's got like your Facebook logo or your YouTube logo, which is fantastic. So let's just scroll down, see if there's any question. Dominic, I'm still using a mouse. Dominic says, I'm still using a mouse. Uh, oh, blimey, keep moving that down there. I'm still using a mouse. Do you have any uh, tips for using a tablet? Uh, the only tip I can give you, Dominic, is definitely have one, definitely use one, but stick with it. I remember when I first got mine, when I first started out, everyone was saying to get one, and I hated it. For the first, when I first got it out, I just couldn't get to grips with it, so I actually got rid of it. Later on, I then got another one and I just stuck with it for about a week. And after that, I have not looked back. It's, it's just one of those things that you have to, 
really kind of get into um, just get used to using it. That eye hand coordination. Once you get it, you'll you'll be amazed what you can do with it. It's so so good. Uh, nice comment here from my mate Ian saying that last skin technique was insane. Ian, it is so so useful. It really really is useful. It's incredible what you can do with it. It really is. Uh, but having a quick look here. Um, uh, some boom boom boom. Oh, question here again from Dominic. Uh, so one of the question in this day and age, do you calibrate your monitor still? I'm on a PC. Absolutely, 100%. Yes, I do. I'd like to say I'm religious about doing it. Uh, I tend to do it once a month when I remember, but I always do it before I do a print, because what I don't want to do is waste my money on paper and ink and get something that just looks wrong. So I'll always just take a few minutes just to get it calibrated before I do a print. That's that's my my advice there for that. Uh, Dominic says, how do you sign up to how my how to sign up to the email? Just go to the website glinjuice.com and you'll scroll down. And you'll see the section that you can fill it in, Dominic. And when you do, you'll then get a download where you can download a black and white preset, the skin fix preset, all that kind of stuff as well. So there's all that as well. Um, let's have a look here. I don't want to sit here going through loads. And what I will do afterwards is have a look, see if there's any really tricky ones. Um, and then I can answer you directly. But no, I think that's good. Looks like it's been working all right going through to Facebook and YouTube. So my mate Brian, who's a moderator, always... He's always got my back. He's always looking out for making sure everything's all right. I've not had a message come through saying it's not working, so that's good. Um, so again, right, a couple of things to finish off. Again, reminder, don't forget Photoshop Virtual Summit. Just get your free pass. You got, you know, if you don't get it, you'll, you'll, you'll regret it, honestly. But if you do get to use it, then great. But if you don't, it doesn't matter. You've lost nothing. And the other thing I wanted to mention as well, because I did this uh, last time, was to mention about BenQ, because BenQ who uh, I do do some work with. I'm one of their ambassadors, which I am genuinely really proud of it. They're just a fantastic company to work for and do stuff with. But they've given me a code, a code that I can pass out to allow people to get discounts off BenQ displays. Any of the SW, which is the photographer ones, or the PD range, which are designer ones. If you, do, if you are interested in looking at getting a new monitor, just give me a shout. I'm not going to post it up publicly in here because I don't like to do it that way. Just drop me a message and we can talk on email or whatever and I can pass the details to you how you can go about getting a discount. But that's it. We've done it. Listen, it's been one heck of a week. It really has. Brian knows why. Ian, Ian I think, knows why. Uh, it's been a really tough week, really tough week. But it's, it's ended off brilliant. I just had to do this. I, I was missing out having this uh, contact. So I'm glad we've done this. And I just really hope that's been useful. Um, I will leave you to it. That is all I've got for you. So thank you for watching on YouTube. Thank you for watching on Facebook, wherever you are in the world. Whatever time of day it is, enjoy the rest of the day. And I will catch you in a week's time. But look out for some couple of pre-records coming as well this week. Take care, folks.